you way out today. Now, let's get ready to pray in as we prepare to pray the roof off of this place. Make some noise for Jesus! Woo! Let's make some noise for Jesus! Good morning, CFC. Thank you for coming this morning. You could have went anywhere, but you chose to come here. How many know that what we saw all week can take place here this morning? It can happen. It's going to happen. Just have an expecting heart. Let's take the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for waking us up this morning. For putting air in our lungs, for allowing us to wake up. That means it's a new day. It's a new chance for things, God. We just open our hearts up to you, Lord. We open up our minds, God. I pray over every person from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord, that you bless them and be with them. I pray for salvation in this place. I pray for healing in this place, God. Please move and have your way in this service. Bless these people that are on this stage that's going to sing your prayers, God. As they anoint these instruments, Lord, as they give the praise to you, God. We honor you. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' almighty name I pray. Amen. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison door. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. He's doing the house of the Lord. Our God is shining in His place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. And he hung up on that cross. And he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yeah. It's joy in the house of the Lord. It's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. It's joy in the house of the Lord. God is shining in His place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, anybody got a praise for Him this morning? See, we're the players, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven. Accept it, redeemed by His grace. Let the hearts of the Lord sing praise. Sing it again. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accept it, redeemed by His grace. Let the hearts of the Lord sing praise.
we're here to celebrate mothers today. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Yes, Amen. Amen. We'll have more to say about that momentarily, but we're always here to magnify just one. Talk about it this morning, Sister Joy. Yes, I mean, today is Mother's Day, and that is a blessing. And I praise the Lord for my mother. We don't get to see each other very often, but God is so good, church. And if it weren't for Christ, where would we be today? We'd be lost and undone. He's the one we need to glorify. It's good that we come in here and we worship the Lord, but don't just get caught up with freedom. Get caught up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift His name up this morning because He's worthy to be praised. He's done so much for us. He's done so much. He deserves all of our praise. He really does. And I just want to always magnify Him wherever I am, wherever I go. I want people to see Jesus in me. Like the man of God said the other night, sometimes you don't even have to tell them anything about God. They'll see it on you. Do they see it on you? What do they feel on you? Try the spirits because not everyone that comes in the house of the Lord has the right spirit on them. You be careful about that. That's from the Holy Spirit this morning. He said, you be careful. You try the spirits, but you magnify him today. You glorify him. This is his day too. And I just praise him. I praise him for all that he does for me and all that he does for you. He's a good God. And the devil's not going to shut my praise up. I'm going to praise him in the midst of the storm. I'm going to praise him on the mountaintop and I'll praise him in the valley. He provides for us, sis. He's a good God. The world says, no, you don't need him. Yes, you do need him. That's what's wrong with the world. A nation that turns its back on God shall be turned into hell. What's going on today, church? And I'm going to magnify him and give him praise always. Even in the workplace, I'm going to speak the name of Jesus. When they tell you you can't speak the name of Jesus, you go ahead and speak it. He'll take care of you. I love him this morning, and I praise him. He is a good God. Go ahead, Pastor. Hallelujah. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified. altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. The creation suddenly articulate the thousand tongues to live one cry from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified oh. every day of my life well, the whole His name 
finds its inmost melody And every human heart its native pride Oh, then in one in a raptured hymn of praise We'll sing Christ being magnified Come on. I won't bow to idols. I stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be for my feelings. I hold fast to what is true. Tell them, if the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. Cause death is just a doorway to resurrection life. If I join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory, I'll be angels and the saints. Yes, my heart will still be singing, and my song will be Oh 
every day, Lord Jesus. Less of ourselves and so much more of you, God. So much more of you, God. Hallelujah. And we couldn't live that way if we didn't believe you. We couldn't live that way. And we can't live that way unless we know it. Thank you. Oh, I've seen too much. Thank you, Lord. I've seen disappointments. I've had grief. I've had people die that I prayed would live. I've had people be sick that I prayed would be healed. I prayed for tragedies not to happen that still happen. But can I tell you, he's still too good not to believe. There have been things that I do not understand. But I cannot take what I don't understand and what I'm disappointed about and what I'm sad about and what I'm heartbroken about and let that be a reason that I turn from the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And he's still the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I know life is hard. I know loss is tragic. Hallelujah. The things we don't understand hurt us unimaginably. But can I tell you, here's the thing about your Jesus. He's always there with you. Yes, he is. Man. He said in this life and in this earth, in this world, we would have tribulations. But be of good cheer. We've overcome. We've overcome. Yes, Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's sing this song this morning that declares our faith that declares our knowledge and our certainty in who He is. Amen. Would you help me sing this morning? I've lived stories that have proved your faithfulness. I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend. There is beauty in what I can't understand. Jesus said to you, Jesus, it's you. Oh, I believe the wonder-working God, the wonder-working God. All the miracles we've seen, too good to not believe. The wonder-working God, you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see Too good to not believe Too good! Too good to not believe Too good to not believe I can't resurrect a man with my own hands But just the mention of your name can raise the dead to all the glory to the only one who can Jesus it's you Jesus it's you oh I believe the one new working God the one new working God oh the miracles I've seen not to believe you've done too many things in my life I 
I want us to sing this together as a mighty army. I'm going to let you sing. You ready? Come on, sing it. I've seen. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken bodies heal. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. Tell him. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he I've seen can't families do reunited. It. I've seen families reunited. And I've seen prodigals return. Huh. return. Don't you tell me These can't altars do are open. It. Don't you tell me place today that are hurting yes Lord and the enemy is trying to drive them so far to the edge that they lose their faith hope and knowledge in what you said Father we come to you today and we ask you Lord God to restore faith and hope hallelujah and to increase empower and expectancy Lord God God we expect and anticipate a move we anticipate and expect healing and deliverance Lord God for everyone those suffering from cancer those whose bodies are in brokenness Lord God 
Lord God, lives that look like they're on the brink of death, marriages on the brink of death, can resurrect today. Those battling with mental health issues, Lord God, you be the loudest voice. Let them let you be the loudest voice. And God, I ask you today to reunite families that are indifferent. Bring back prodigal sons and daughters that have walked away from the faith. Help troubled souls be delivered, Lord God. And God, let addicts <laughs> that are addicted, God, but they love you. And you love them. You died for them. And you know where they are. Holy Father, right now, help them, Jesus, to be free, to be free from the poison that wants to destroy them. I rebuke and renounce Satan in all his tricks this morning. And I lift up to you, sons and daughters the mothers who are heartbroken. I lift them up to you today. I praise your name through my tears and my pain through my brokenness and weariness Even in bouts with depression and anxiety, we praise your name. We praise your name. It doesn't make you a weak Christian if you suffer from depression and anxiety. It just means you need to cry out to God. Come on, somebody. Religion will say you can't suffer from things like that. You have the King of Kings. We're still in this flesh, aren't we? We're still on this earth, aren't we? The things of this earth will affect the Christian. But I serve a God that can help us rise above it this morning. Oh, let the broken be put back together this morning. Let the weary find peace. Let every person under the sound of my voice receive hope this morning. Hallelujah. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you, Lord. Somebody give him a mighty praise. We normally do this next song as a, as a special. But I wanted to sing it this morning because Mother's Day hits different for many people every year, especially as we get older. And you sound all right? And uh, we're going to sing a Mother's Day song this morning for every mother in here, every mother online. I sing it to my mother. I sing it to my mother-in-law. I thank God for my mama. I pray for my mama this morning. She's suffering from a stomach infection. She's getting over. She spent some time in the hospital during the, the conference. And we brought her home Friday. And I lift up my mother-in-law that prayed for me and claimed. When I was working the nightclubs, she was anointing my pillow, claiming that I'd be a man of God. I'm thankful for my spiritual mother, Lily Brazil, and all her prayers through the years. Amen. And all her encouragement. Hallelujah. When so many from her generation turned their back on me and refused to support what was going on here, the former first lady of this church didn't turn her back on me, and I love her for that. And I thank God for her. She prays for me. She defends me. I know that for a fact. I know she's defended me. 
And I'm thankful for the mother of my children, my beautiful queen, Tiffany. Thank you, baby. We dedicate this song to all the mothers in this room and to those that have lost your mother today. You'll be going to get flowers for that graveside. I want to tell you right now, I want you to just embrace the memories and the love you have for your mother. For some of you, it's your first Mother's Day without her. Amen. This song is for you. There was a home in town with broken kids lost and found we come from miles around just to see what love was all about cause mama had a way of making things okay she cook us our favorite meal Sit and listen to how we feel Oh, how the pain was real How many families would the devil steal Cause mama had a way Making things okay In that home was safe to be young enough to dream find the faith to believe and in that home love it had no end it's where we learn to forgive in that home Mama always had the music on Sometimes loud, sometimes soft When I asked about her favorite song She opened her Bible to the book of songs She always found a way To talk about grace In that home To be young enough to dream Find the faith to believe In that home Love it had no end It's where we learn to forgive In that home And on that day I got the news Mama stay here was almost through I stayed all night by her side Held her hand, looked in her eyes and Said, Mama, when you're home I know you'll be safe And strong enough to see The faith that you believe In that home have no end No will see you again You're going to see her again In that home In that home In that Happy Mother's Day, everyone.
God some praise for some mamas out there. Those with us and those that have gone on to glory. Come on, Pastor. Let's stay right there. These altars are open to anybody that's hurting this morning whose mom's not here today. You will see them again one day. It's not over. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to go back to that song we were singing a while ago, Too Good to Not Believe. Oh, Jesus, too good not to believe. He's awesome. Oh, to be loved by you, Lord. To be loved by you, Jesus. It's no greater love than the one that died on the cross for your sins. For you. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all of us. He will meet you in your brokenness. He will meet you in your bitterness. He will meet you wherever you're at. Just open up your hearts to him. Open up your minds. Just be a willing heart. Be a willing vessel. Let him in. My ushers come down. I can feel him moving in this place. I know this is a little atmosphere because we just sing this song, but he can move. He can. He's still moving. We're at church. These altars are open. There's people that need healing. These altars are open. If you got some bitterness that you need to lay down, come and lay them down. If you need some prayer, come to the altar. We'll pray over you. We have time. We will make time. We saw it all week. We will see it today. It, it's not over. It's just beginning. It is just beginning. It is time. It's no. Don't waste it. Don't play with it. Thank you, Jesus. I have a scripture I did want to read. It's in Romans. Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living, holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is the truly the way to worship him. When sacrificing an animal according to God's law, a priest will kill the animal and place it on the altar as an offering to God. Sacrifice was important, but even in the Old Testament, God made it clear that obedience from the heart was much more important. God wants us to offer ourselves, not animals, as living sacrifice daily. He says daily. Laying aside our own desires to follow him. Putting all of our energy and resources at his disposal and trusting him to guide us. We do this out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven. God has good and pleasing and perfect plans for his children. Oh, to be called a child of God, y'all. To be called a child of God is basic. He wants us to be transformed people with renewed minds. He is renewing some minds this morning. Living to honor and obey him and to serve others in the name of Jesus. Not ourselves, but in the name of Jesus. Because he wants only what is best for us. And because he gave his son, his one and only son, to make our new life possible. We should, should joyfully give ourselves as a living sacrifice on his service. Thank you, Jesus. There are plenty of ways to give if you cannot attend. You can give on our website at cfcsantacross.com. You can also give on our Share Faith app. Download, download instructions for Apple and Android or on our website and Facebook page. You can also mail in our, your, dona your donation to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South North Carolina Highway 58, MCD 27822. Again, thank you for your giving. Let's pray, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to say I love you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in this place for these people, for your church, God. We trust and believe that you're coming back again, but God, we will serve you while we're waiting, God. So I pray over this offering that you just bless it and send it out as you see fit, Lord. Bless those who give and tithe and offering to you, God. We just trust in your plans that you're doing. We lean not on our own understanding, but on yours, God. On your understanding and your knowledge. Just fill us up with wisdom today during the service, during the message, God. May we just decrease so you can increase in our lives. In Jesus' almighty name I pray, amen. You might not give at this time.
Hallelujah. How about that for worship service, guys? Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Who's excited? Who's ready for the word today? For this new series. We had an awesome beginning of the week with the Empowerment Conference. 
I'm excited for this new, se- uh, this new series of Righteous Uprising. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce to y'all to my greatest pastor, Pastor Daniel Parker. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus in the house. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited about praise and worship in this church. We're raising up a new generation. Daniel and Rachel, I'm proud of you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Y'all pray for me this morning. I don't know how long this coat's going to stay on. All visitors, turn in your slips to the Connect Corner after service. We have a gift for you. Wednesday night fellowship meals have begun. If you're going to eat with us this Wednesday, please register uh, each week at the Connect Corner. And the 2023 Empowerment Conference was phenomenal. I want to thank each and every person that served. And I saw you serving. I saw you sweating. And then I saw you rejoicing and praising God. Amen. Lives were changed, and I know it. And I want to take a moment right now to thank the people in this church. We knew we were going to have visitors, and we had lots of visitors. But when a church hosts something, it needs its core people. And several of you are self-employed, and you don't punch a clock from 8 to 5. Some of you run businesses that don't even close till 5 o'clock. And you rushed and came. And we're here every night. I saw your sacrifice. And it deeply, deeply blessed me, encouraged me, and gave me hope like I've never had as a pastor. We've never had that kind of consistency in our crowd turnout each night. And the people of God were here, and you saw what God was doing. It was a very different event than what we've ever had. We kicked it off with sound teaching that morning. We had new people join the church. It was a great way to kick off a conference. Then that night, it was prophetic. Hands were laid upon people. People were prayed for, and, and, and prophetic words were spoken. Then Monday night, a fireball rolled into town. And this place just got lit from the floor to the ceiling like I've never seen before. I was stepping over bodies. Everybody was late. Folks, I ain't never seen laid out in the spirit. The line formed from here all the way around the, the, the wall to the sound room. And I had to put the guitar down because I said, there's no way I'm going to stand here and let this man pray for all these people. He's going to be war slam out. And we all got involved. We, we formed a makeshift altar team. People s- stepped up. Folks were praying for people. Children were laying hands on adults speaking the word of God on them. It was like the prophecy of Joel that Peter recited in Acts 2 coming forth. And in Tuesday night, Chance come in and he loved on us and he encouraged you. And then we took a shift because after we had been empowered, we needed to be informed of what we've been empowered to stand against. And Ken Fontenot come in here And not only has he become a politician, he's become a much bolder preacher. And he come in here and told us all kinds of stuff, demonic things that are going on in Raleigh around the governor's mansion. Come on, somebody. Then Thursday night, the inspiration God gave me to even have this conference Because I was debating whether or not to have, can we have a conference that goes from Sunday to Thursday? Will the people show up? Will the people support it? Yes, you did. John Amanchuku come in here. And he spoke truth. He preached Bible. 
and he called out wickedness. He called out foolishness, and he called out punks in the pulpit. I got so caught up in that night that he jumped up, walked out the door before I could even speak that word that I'd been telling you all week I was going to speak. And I got caught up in it too. And so someone came up to me immediately after the service. They said, you never told him what you were supposed to tell him. Y'all forgive me, all right? But he said, but that, that, that one, that brother that told me that, backed it up and said, maybe God didn't want you to say that in front of everybody right then. So what I did is I went out there. He was signing books. Oh, man, if you've not got, you can't get it now for 20 bucks in cash. You can get it on Amazon now. But I'm going to start reading it tomorrow morning. I went out there and I told him. And it shocked him. And he looked at me like, ooh, preacher, I don't know about that. So he's got to pray about it. But then it was confirmed by someone in the lobby and on Facebook. So I'm going to tell you what I told him. And we just need to pray for him. I told him that I really truly believe it's been pressed upon my heart to tell him that when Mark Robinson takes the governorship, he is to run for lieutenant governor. And he will be our new <laughs> lieutenant governor. Amen. He said he's not welcomed at many churches, and many churches that he's invited to, he doesn't get the support of the congregation like he got here. And so I tell you, we need to be praying for him, be praying big time for him, because he's saying things that society says he's not supposed to say. But amen. But he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And John Amon Chukwu is a free man. Amen? All right. So again, I thank you, thank you, thank you. It was life-changing. I needed it. In the last year, I have had people in my life have terrible difficulties that wrecked their whole life, and I stood and couldn't do anything about it. I tried. I lost my father, the greatest loss of my life. This last year has been hard on many of you in this church. So I knew people in this church that have lost parents in this past year. You've had trouble in your body. You've had trouble in your personal life. I knew you needed an empowerment conference. And I'm glad you realized you needed it and you came. You came. The altars were full every night. The praise team was on point every single night night and the word is what we needed to hear every single session i thank god for christian fellowship church and i thank god for the empowerment conference give yourselves a hand this morning also there's an all-new single ladies life group begins on saturday may 20th you can register at the net corner and congratulations again to our newest members. Amen. Our newest members, Heather West and the Jeffrey Jones family. Amen. All right. All other life groups will not meet uh, this, this month in May due to the Empowerment Conference, okay? So uh, the final men's fellowship luncheon of this season is next Sunday, and I put on here with a big fish fry. Is that the deal? Hallelujah. Amen. So, guys, next Sunday, lunch, after church, big fish fry, big prayer meeting. Amen. It'll be our last one. We'll take the summer off. Now, before we dismiss kids, it's time on Mother's Day. We've never done this on Mother's Day before, and we've never done it like this. We're getting ready to have some baby dedications. Amen. I want all the families that are coming that have registered for baby dedication to come on up. We're going to dedicate your child to the house of the Lord. Amen. How many know in the time that we're living in, it's more important than ever to dedicate your child to the house of the Lord? Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. I expected a way more bigger amen than that. Because after everything you've learned this past week, this isn't just on your news screen. This isn't just things that are happening out in California somewhere. 
It's right in your backyard. They're trying to take toddlers and do transition surgery on the... How can a toddler say they don't know what sex they're supposed to be? That's their woke mama and daddy who done lost their mind. Because a three-year-old is crazy, Stokes. And it's not going on in California and New York, Canada, all the liberal places. It's going on right here. Right here. ECU, Duke, UNC, medical programs that we have depended on that have saved the lives of many people in this room. Amen. Are offering these services. That's demonic. It's everywhere. Do we finally see? Come on, mamas and daddies, look up at me. Do you finally see how vital it is to raise your child, not everybody else's child, but your child, in the house of God? Come on, quit leaving them at the house. They need to be indoctrinated in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I talking right? If they grown, I understand. But if they're living under your roof, they're eating your food, wearing the clothes you bought them, and got a phone that you gave them and you paid for, amen, they need to be here with you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm about to preach this morning. We're so happy that people want to dedicate. How about a little music to you, man? A little music in the background. They want to dedicate their children to the house of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, and Jesus said it himself, you'd be better off with a millstone tied around your neck, dragging you to the bottom of the lake. That's pretty bad there. Then you would be for leading a child in the wrong way. It's hard right now. Many of you, you can't afford private school. And you work all day. How you go homeschool? We've been trusting the public school system. We need to pray for our public school system. We need undercover bold Christians teaching our children. And then when your kid comes home and says, this teacher and that teacher is trying to force this kind of stuff on us, that's when you march down there and say, I'm taking my kid out of that class. Amen? You got to be aware. You got to open your eyes, open your listening ears, and know what's going on. Dads and moms. Come on, dads. Don't just say, well, mama will take care of it. I got to go to work. Dad, you got to know what's going on, too. You are the head of that house. Amen. And he said, forbid not these little ones to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. When it comes to faith, the Lord would have you and I, all these adults, there's only one way, he says, to act like a child. Don't act like a child when it comes to the Bible. Don't act like a child when it comes to serving in church. I have to say that. Amen? Because people can talk a big game. Then they start serving in church, causing drama, and you finally find out what a child they really are. Amen? But when it comes to having faith, have faith like a child. What does that mean? You see this baby right here? He knows his mama's holding him right now. You don't even have to stand up. He knows his daddy's going to put a roof over his head, food in his little belly. You see this little fella right here? Look at him. You're a handsome little fella, ain't you? What's a beautiful little boy up here. Hallelujah. He knows his daddy's got him. And because his mama and daddy are pledging and declaring in public today to raise him up in the house of the Lord, he's going to know of another father who's got him too. His heavenly father. Amen. What are your names this morning? Amber. Amber. Cameron. Amber and Camber. Amber and Cameron. And what's the baby's name? Carter. And Carter. <laughs> All right, Cardi, will you let me hold your shoe? You want to come to me? Come to me. Here we go, buddy. I want every hand in this place stretched towards Carter. 
Father, I come to you right now for little Carter. And God, you knew him before he was even formed in his mother's womb, Lord. God, we know there'd be demons out there that say he don't even deserve to live. But God, we rebuke that assignment. And we're so glad that he is alive, that he's with us. That he's being raised by parents who see that it's important to raise their child in the house of the Lord. So God, I pray over this family. I pray over Amber and Cameron and Carter. Hallelujah. As they raise him up in the things of God so that when he's older, he will not deter from it or stray from it. God, I'm so thankful today. I'm so thankful for little Carter. Bless his life. Help him grow in leaps and bounds. And Lord God, let him increase even more in you. In Jesus' holy name. Somebody say amen. He's already laying hands on me and praying for me. I receive it, Carter. I receive it in Jesus' name. You can stay right here. Amen. Thank you both. Thank you both for raising this baby in the house of the Lord. He's going to grow up to be great and do mighty, mighty things. Come on, can we hear it for the Bell family? Now it's time to keep up with the Joneses. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Tell me your name again. Lawson. Oh, it's not Rassy Jr. Okay. All right. Lawson. Lawson. All right, buddy, you ready? We're going to pray for you today. You want to come, Pastor Daniel? You want to come to me? You want to come to me? I see you. I see these little teeth. Mama to walk with us? You want Mama and David to walk with us? It's all right. It's okay. Let's walk together, y'all. Father, stretch your hands forth this way. Father, I come right now for this precious blessing, this miracle, Lord God, that you authored. God, I thank you for Jeffrey and Taylor, God. I thank you for bringing them together in the right way, bringing them together in holy matrimony, Lord God. And I was able to share in that day with them. And God, now I'm able to dedicate their baby. I thank you for that, God. I thank you for this journey that we go on together. I thank you for these families. I thank you for them trusting in this ministry, Lord God, to officiate their holy matrimony and dedicate their miracle blessing. Lord God, we know that Satan would love to attack his generation, destroy them before they can even breathe. Oh, but God, hallelujah, he has lived and he shall reign with you. God, He will surely see the return of you. And he will reign with you and He will grow to do great things. I thank you for the love of His entire family. I believe this baby is surrounded by the power of love. And I thank you for that, God. I thank you for Jeffrey and Taylor. Lord God, may they continue to raise Him in the house of the Lord and in the things of God so that when He's older, He shall not depart from it. God, we praise you, we love you, and we thank you for Lawson's little life. In Jesus' holy name, somebody say amen. Hallelujah, there you go. Come on, can we thank the Bill and Jones family this morning? We're proud of you guys. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated. The King's kids and Junior kids, Junior King's kids can be dismissed at this time. Can we thank our volunteers for sacrificing their time? with our children this morning. Amen. How many is happy to be stuck in here with me? Whew. Um, I want to thank everybody for their prayers. Freedom Worship began our studio journey yesterday, and we began to lay down uh, some tracks for our first ever original praise and worship album. Amen. I want to thank Chuck Johnson. I know he's out there working, but he went with us, and man, I don't know what we would do without Chuck. He is such a friend, such a brother, such a servant of the Lord. He loves his God. He loves his church. He loves his pastor, and he loves his praise team. Amen. And um, he helped us so much yesterday, and we had a good time, and we learned a lot about the process. And let me tell you, it's not something you just run up there and knock out. It's going to take months, y'all. All right, so be patient with us. I know we've been waiting a long time, but we wanted to do it right. Amen? Hallelujah. This church don't put out no junk. 
Anything we do in Christ Jesus, in word or deed, we do in excellence. Amen? So we're going to have a hard work in summer of uh, getting this album done, and, and then we'll, we'll get back with you in the fall and see what's going on. Hallelujah. Amen. But turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. It's my turn now to talk about a righteous uprising. We got this series kicked off in our conference, and everyone brought a different message concerning what it meant to righteously rise up. If you missed any of the Empowerment Conference, please go back. Don't miss out on the journey that your church took. We want you to be a part of it, and modern technology allows that now. Go in there and get those teachings. I know the altar services were incredible, and we don't um, we don't broadcast those, but the words were awesome, and I want everyone to hear that, okay? Somebody say a righteous uprising. The people of God have been shoved in a corner for far too long in this demonic influence society and made to feel voiceless, and if we speak up, we are vilified and demonized, Right? But the Bible says there would come a day when good would be called evil and evil would be called good. We are in that day. We are in that day. And just because we don't want boys in our little girls' locker rooms, that don't make us hate mongers. That makes us Christians. That makes us God's people. That makes us believers. Amen? And I know in this time we're living in, Everybody wants their sin justified. They want their abominable lifestyles to be excused, amen, and told they're still going to heaven. I'm here to tell you right now, if you shake your fist at God and say, I'm not going to be the gender you made me, and I'm not going to marry the opposite sex like I'm supposed to, I'm here to tell you I love you, and there's a lot of people going to hell for a lot of different reasons, but you will certainly go there for that. That is a, no, there's no greater slap in the face towards God when you start saying the way you made me won't good enough I'm going to get a doctor to change it can I tell you and I know we might have some visitors in here but I just got to be real a man that has a sex change operation is still a man he's still a man he's a man with mutilated genitalia and fake breasts but he's still a man you cannot Doctors are not God. God made them the gender they are. And you may feel like you feel or feel have feelings for the same sex. Amen. You were born in an unsaved flesh. That's why you got to be born again. And if those tendencies and those feelings are still there, you've got to get that under the blood of Jesus. We can't do everything we feel like doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the tables are turning. The tables are turning, and God is not asking us to raise our fists nor burn down cities. But He's asking us to rise up. He's asking us to wake up, and He's asking us to look up. To get our homes in biblical order. To live our best consecrated Christian life right now to be steadfast with our families in the house of the Lord like we saw these young couples just pledge right educate ourselves in strong Christian doctrine and entrusted Christian teaching and then pray 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 like never before that is how we rise up that is how we take back territory this is how America gets saved before the rapture of the church takes place this is how minds change and how hearts turn back to God. This is a righteous uprising. Can I get a witness in this place? Father, I praise you right now for the time of worship, the time of reflection, the time of declaring, pledging, and committing children to the house of the Lord. God, I say today, Lord God, to help me, as I preach this first message today, we thank you for this incredible life-changing transformation week that we've had. And God, I ask you right now, continue to transform. 
continue to change people's minds and continue to turn hearts back to you. Let every hearer of the word today, both in person and online, be challenged and changed so that you can be glorified by their life. For it's in Jesus' name we say, amen. We say amen, and we give him praise because he alone is worthy. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 8, when we begin reading, we'll be in verse 43. My one and only focus point today is this. Rising up in declared faith. Rising up, not in just faith, but declared faith, meaning what I've declared, what I've spoken, what I've said, what I've committed to. Hallelujah. Meaning, if you go around saying you got faith to believe for this, you really got to do that. We don't need phony, fake faith. We need real, declared faith in this time we're living in. I'm here to tell you that's the only kind of faith that's ever gotten it done, and it's the only kind of faith that's going to get it done now. Hallelujah. That means when you're looking at detrimental circumstances, when you're looking at death in somebody's eyes, you got to say that man will live and not die in Jesus' name. When you're in the hospital room and the doctor said there's nothing else we can do, that's when you got to look up to heaven and say, God, it's your turn now. You are the great physician. I believe you and I trust you. When you wake up in the morning and that ache and pain that you prayed for to be healed has come back, you got to speak by declared faith. Once again, I am healed by his blood, by his stripes. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Is anybody hearing me this morning? When it comes to this portion of scripture, we've reviewed this account so many times concerning the woman with the issue of blood. I preached it up and down. Pastor Tim Hall has preached it inside and out. Pastor Jerry Brazil has preached it all over the place. This account has been preached numerous times in this house. But guess what? I'm going to preach it again. Because the same word is still good. Hallelujah. Yet there is so much inspiration and empowerment when it comes to this faith-filled supernatural healing story. So as we kick off this month's all-new sermon series, coming off of our recent conference, let's review this yet again and be enriched even more by it as we begin in verse 43. Now we know to set up the story, we know that Jesus is not necessarily, has, he's not said anything about looking for this woman. He's going with a man named Jairus, to his house to raise up his daughter. The daughter is very sick. Midway, uh, after he has this encounter with this woman with the issue of blood, someone comes up and says, the daughter has died. In other words, and that was, if you really think about it, Pastor Tim, that was the devil attacking Jairus concerning Jesus. If Jesus hadn't have stu uh, stood there and asked who in the world was touching him, he might would have gotten to my daughter in time. I was here first, Jesus. You were supposed to pray for my little girl first, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Y'all know how Christians can be. So he's on his way to Jairus' house. It would look as though the woman with the issue of blood is not even on Jesus' radar. But how many know that everybody's on Jesus' radar? Everybody. Whatever you got going on, you're on his radar this morning. Hallelujah. So verse 43 says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, not 12 days, not 12 hours, not 12 weeks, not 12 months, 12 years, 12 years, every single day, 12 years will become your life. 
It will become the way you live. It will become the way you function. It will become the way you think. She had uncontrollable blood flowing out of her body. They did not have the, the, the modern things that women have now, uh, health care products to help with that. She was humiliated. How many times had she been out in public and began to bleed? I'm not trying to get graphic here. I just want you to know her heart. How many times had she walked in the place of the market or in the common places, amen, and blood was on the ground and she was humiliated. She had to plan everything around her sickness. Her sickness became her whole life. Well, I'm usually kind of bad in the morning, so I'll have to wait. I won't go out until this time of day. You may be living like that now, not with this blood issue, but other things. Things going on with your stomach. Things going on with your body. And you say, I can't go. I, I, I can't go to, to, to this first thing in the morning. I, at this time, I'm normally dealing with my sickness. And all of a sudden, you begin to claim this thing like it's a part of your family. And it's a part of your life. Come on, somebody. And God don't want you to claim those things. You've got to learn how to renounce the things that are not supposed to be in your life. Amen? Her whole life starts to become about her sickness. She had it 12 long years. After 12 years, many people praying for something to happen that hasn't happened yet, they'd give up. They'd give up. But the more I read and study about this woman, and we don't know her name, all we know is her affliction. She is known and named by her affliction. That's how much it has saturated her life. Can I tell you, you do not have to be known by your troubles. You do not have to be known by your sickness. You do not have to be known by your weaknesses. A woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood, every bit of money she ever had, on physicians, on doctors, no telling what kind of crazy things they made her do or what kind of crazy things they tried on her, trying to help cure her. But it says right here, she could not be healed. She couldn't be healed by any of them. Any of them. And she came from behind, touched the border of his garment. Somebody say the border of his garment. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. Her flow of blood stopped. Twelve years now. All kinds of money. All kinds of procedures. All kinds of doctors. Am I talking to anybody right now? And they could not heal her. But just one touch. One touch of Jesus. And it immediately stopped. She could not be healed by any physicians, yet she heard, she heard about Jesus, which caused faith to come, because faith comes by hearing. She had heard about Jesus, and then she believed if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she'd be healed. Why? Why? There was something deeper going on there. She knew his word. In Malachi 4.2, it's prophesied that the Messiah would come and healing would be in his wings. In his wings. That don't mean the Messiah is an angel with wings. The angels are Michael and Gabriel. That's the only two we're ever told of. And they're not little babies playing a harp. They're mighty men. Jacked to the T. Steroids couldn't do this. Come on, somebody. Lift and wait six days a week except on Sunday. Can't do this. People talk about, I've seen an angel. I say, everybody that ever saw an angel in the Bible messed their britches. What do you mean? When you are in the presence of a protector and a defender, of a leader of God's army, 
and they've been in the presence of a holy God crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. When you are in the presence of that kind of power, it's going to do something to your finite flesh. Oh, come on, somebody. But she had heard the word in Malachi 4.2 that the Messiah would come and healing would be in his wings. Wing, the wing of a robe, was also called the border of a garment or the hem, H-E-M, of a garment. We've been over that before. But for some of you that didn't realize that, Malachi 4.2. That shows you that not only has she heard there was a healer in town, she believed he was the Messiah. Just like blind Bartimaeus, when he was blind and he cried out and everybody told him to be quiet, leave Jesus alone. He cried out even louder, son of David. That was prophetic to say because prophecy said the Messiah would come from the lineage of David. So when blind Bartimaeus declared this in faith he was telling Jesus I know exactly who you are I know exactly who you are therefore I know what you're capable of good God Almighty does anybody in here know exactly who Jesus is and what he is exactly capable of sometimes we say we do in church then life hits us and we forget Sickness hits you. Tragedy hits you. Disease hits you. Loss hits you. Addiction hits your family. Come on, whatever it is, that is when you are going to have to stand on the Word of God and what you have heard from the Word of God like never before. She had heard that there was healing in his wings. Listen, everybody else, Stokes, that approached Jesus for healing got in front of him and wanted him to lay hands on them. They wanted him to verbally and vocally minister to them, and they needed to let him know they were there. But she caught a hold of the word. In Malachi 4.2, they said when the Messiah would come, there'd be healing in the border or the hem of his garment. And that's when she said, you know what? I don't need to get no attention. I don't want nobody to see me. When he comes this way, I'm going to jump in that crowd because I've been hearing about all the crowds forming around him. And I'm just going to slip in there. Amen. And I ain't trying to be holier than thou. I'm not trying to be smarter than everybody else. I'm just going to go apply what I've learned from the Bible. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in the midst of that crowd and I'm just going to touch where I no, somebody say no. K N O W, where I know and believe healing is. Good God Almighty. And she knew and believed and trusted in that word so much. Her faith. Come on, somebody. That's good preaching right there. Amen. Verse 45. And Jesus said to this, He said, Who touched me? Crowds were all around him. People everywhere. And Jesus said, who touched me? And everybody denied it. What do you mean? What do you mean? Peter and those with him, his disciples said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you. And you say, who touched me? You see, the disciples thought it odd since so many were touching Jesus. Yet Jesus distinguished a distinct difference. No matter how many people were gathered around him, Jesus knew the difference in fans versus faith. People who were there for the hoopla. People there who were there, come on, for the world's first rock star. Come on, somebody. For the world's first celebrity. No one had ever gathered around anyone like that. Yes, they showed up for John the Baptist, but come on. John the Baptist's ministry was very short. When Jesus came to town, they gathered around him. And he knew there was a distinct difference because he felt power leave from him. Are we pulling on the Lord enough that power leaves heaven 
and hits your life. Has anybody ever told you you could do that? Or did the denomination you come out say, no, 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 we don't do that here. We don't do that here. We don't act like that in church. Come on, son. I got attacked this week from my church. Amen. Y'all have rock concerts. Y'all don't let the world over there. I said, you don't know what goes on over here. If that's all you see, come on, get it off your Pharisee mind. Amen. We are here to reach generations. Not just mine, not just the one before me, but the one after me. And we have not sold out. Come on, somebody. We're singing God's music. And just because I don't have on one of these every Sunday, don't make me unholy. I'm just as holy in my high tops, in my blue jeans, as I am in a three-piece suit. You can't keep sitting in a church with no youth. You can't keep sitting in a church that's all white or all black. It is time to diversify. It is time to unite and be intentional about it. Because we're not going to a white only heaven. We're not going to a black only heaven. I have gotten a revelation, Pastor Tim. If there's no young people in the church and there's no diversity in race, there's a reason for it. It's not just, oh, well, it's just, it's just like, no, 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 no. There's something going on there. You don't want to invest in the next generation and you don't want your church diversified. Amen. There's a reason. Daniel, you're talking about some good people. Good. I know they're good people. But my God, it's time for the church to look like the kingdom, not a country club. A country club is people of the same background coming together. I've been in public country clubs and I've been in private country clubs. And I want a member there. I got invited. Go in there and some of the folks sitting in there and looking at it like, who, who, who's he? They'll let anybody in here to play golf. I don't see him around. Amen? That's a country club. Am I talking right? And churches are looking the same way. Oh, my God, I'm getting some haters right now. I can feel it right now. Hmm. Thank you, God. Thank you for this model and this example found out in the hick sticks of Sandy Cross. I don't claim to know it all, but I follow a holy God, and God said this is how you do it. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want a church that everybody of all ages, of all colors, amen, could come in and celebrate together like a real Christian family because that's the way heaven is going to be 24 7. Am I talking right in this church? Tim Hall, pray for me, brother. The disciples thought it odd since so many were touching Jesus, yet Jesus distinguished a distinct difference. Give me my first shouting point there, Leon. The Lord knows it and feels it when a believer simply wants more. <laughs> all right, that's all right. I got a few claps there. That was some golf. I got talking about golf and country club. Now y'all clapping like a golf tournament out here. Let me, let, me, let me expound upon that, can I? The Lord knows it and he feels it when a believer wants more. Right? He feels power leaving from him to flow towards them. Hallelujah. He 
king knows when you want more. He knows when you desire more. Christian Fellowship Church, he saw this past week, you wanted more, and he poured his spirit out on all flesh. Come on, somebody. I saw people in their 70s praising God and getting laid out. I saw children laying hands on grown folk, amen, and praising God. There was something going on in here, amen. God was pouring out His Spirit on all flesh who simply wanted more. He knows who wants more, and He knows who don't want more. Amen? He knows the churches that said, God, your will be done, and the churches that says, uh, Lord, we need to be done by 12. Because if you ain't out by 12, the line at the buffet is too long, and then I won't be able to wait. And then I will have to go home and make a ham sandwich on a Sunday. And that is against my religion as a Christian. Because the Bible says that a man or woman of God ought to eat fried chicken or steak after church on Sunday. That's the way my grandmama and granddaddy did it. That's the way my mama and daddy did it. And good God Almighty. That's how I'm going to do it. You know what the praise team had for lunch yesterday? A ham sandwich out of a cooler. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. He ate cold hot dogs, bless his heart. He's hardcore. The Lord knows it and feels it. When anybody getting anything out of it? I'm having a good time. This one. I ain't preached all week, man. Y'all done turned something loose in here. <laughs> all right. So Jesus says, who's touched me, right? And he says in verse 46, he said, but Jesus said, somebody touched me. For I perceive power going out from me. She accessed healing power from him without even asking him. She accessed healing power from him without even asking him. Can you imagine praying to God? For healing and not asking him for healing? How in the world does that work? She didn't ask him. You don't ask for what you already know you have. Amen. Healing's in his wings. All I got to do is touch the wing and the healing's mine. I ain't got to talk. I don't have to ask anything. She knew the word and believed he was him and had declared within herself beforehand, meaning she had a made-up mind. Leon, give me shouting point number two. Good God Almighty, watch this. A Christian with a purpose-filled heart and a made-up mind is unstoppable. Unstoppable. You let a Christian... Get a purpose-filled heart. A purpose-driven life. Come on, somebody. A made-up mind. Knows the Word. Lives the Word. Walks in the Word. You're not going to stop them from praying. You're not going to stop them from believing. You're not going to stop them from reading and studying their Bible. And you're not going to stop them from coming into the house of the Lord every week and giving Him some praise. A Christian like that is unstoppable. Positively speaking, a Christian like that is unstoppable. But also regrettably speak in a negative manner. The same holds true. A Christian with defeat in their heart and hopelessness in their mind. And they've gotten so depressed, and all they see is negativity. All they see is sickness. And whatever they're told they have in their body, they claim it. They think this is a show. 
when they used to think it was hope. <laughs> oh, come on. They think uh, praise and worship is a rock concert. Even though when they were right with God, tears were running down their face. Because we won't just sing in the old songs about him. We're singing the new songs to him. But if they're bound and determined to backslide, if they're bound and determined to live and try to function and excuse their own sin and wickedness, there's nothing you and I can do to stop them. So you say to yourself, well, why won't God stop them? Because God is all about free will. What do we do, preacher? We pray that their mind changes. We pray that they remembered what it was like to taste and see that God was good. That they remember what it was like when their parents raised them up in church. Amen. Come on, somebody. You see how important it is to raise your kids up in church? If you don't raise them up in church, they're not going to have a foundation. I dealt with grown adult men whose parents looked at me and said, can't you do something? Can't? There's no foundation there. You didn't take them to church their whole life. Now you want to undo 45 years of worldliness, of religion, of rules, of no hope, no faith, no covenant. It's going to take some time for them to get delivered. Because the world's been pouring into them for 45 or 50 years. Mama didn't bring us to church all the time, but I'm glad she brought us every time she did. Amen? Come on, somebody. I'm so thankful for my heritage in this church. I'm so thankful for a pastor like Jerry Brazil that told me the truth when I was a kid, and he never changed. When I got to be a grown and he lived like next to the store, and I know you saw me walking out with those cases of beer. I know you saw me walking out with those bottles of wine. But he never jacked me up against the wall and held me by my collar like some Pharisee preachers do. He kept loving me. He kept loving me. And in time, the Holy Ghost got a hold of my heart. And I've not been perfect ever since. But I have served a perfect God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. Come on and just raise your hand over just a minute. And thank the Holy Ghost for coming to church with us today. Oh, it's a privilege and an honor to have the Holy Ghost. Woo! You know how many religious gatherings are going on right now and they don't want no Holy Ghost? It's all about them. It's all about their generation. My God, I'm not here. God didn't call me to help lead one generation to Christ. All generations. Hallelujah. A Christian with a purpose-filled heart is, and a made-up mind is unstoppable. And a Christian who is bound and determined to destroy their life can't be stopped by you but it can be stopped by your prayers because that's when we call on the hounds of heaven. Come on, somebody. You ever seen some hounds going after a, 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 a bear hunting and people use bird dogs? What do they do? They send them out. Go find them. Go find them. And when we get there, that way they'll be there when we get there. Come on, I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is sending hounds out right now to look for the wayward daughters and sons, to look for the prodigal sons. They're going to be found. And then God's going to remind them of their foundation. Amen? I can't help if they're strung out on everything there is to be strung out on. Mama and Daddy, if you raise them in the house of God, there's a foundation. There's a foundation. you got to pray they'll remember their foundation. Come on, somebody. And Mamas and Daddies, hey, quit being selfish. Get them in the house of God so they'll have a foundation because the world's not getting no more nicer. 
it's getting worse and more evil and more evil. We don't need less church and less Jesus. We need all we can get. My God. This ain't no time, brothers and sisters, to be sitting in the house when the church is right down the road, when encouragement is in every row, every seat. There's a tear-stained altar where people's lives have been changed. Come on, get off the sidelines and get in the game. Oh, hallelujah. I have preached four verses. Verse 47, now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling. And a lot of us will get like that, but it's all right. It's all right to tremble in the presence of Jesus. Because <laughs> you go trembling in front of other people, they'll think you're weak and you're weary and you're overwhelmed. But when you're trembling in the presence of Jesus, that means you are honoring the awesomeness and the greatness of the King of Kings. And not only did she tremble, the Bible says she fell down. She fell down before Him. When's the last time? Just you and the Lord. And you got down on your face. And you cried out to Him. Or maybe you've got some complications in your body. You can't get down on the floor. Get on the couch. Get, get somewhere and cry out to Him. And tremble in front of Him. Falling down before Him, it says right here, she declared to Him. What's my focus point? Rising up in declared faith. Rising up in declared Meaning, I'm rising up in something I've already pledged to. Right? She rose up. And she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. We do not know all in which she said to him. But it does say here that she declared to him. Right? Perhaps she got up in front of him and recited Malachi 4.2. The reason I touched you without saying anything is because the Bible said, can you imagine <laughs> quoting the Bible back to Jesus? Guess what? That's what he wants you to do. Not so you can show man or crowds or other people in your family the, the scriptures you've memorized so that God will know you believed it so much that it got so deep-rooted in you. And you might not always say it perfectly verbatim. I don't. I will butcher a piece of scripture in a minute but I know the gist of what it says. And when I get to heaven one day, he's not going to ask me to recite it verbatim. He's just going to want to know, did you believe it, son? Yes, sir, I did. Hallelujah. Come on into your reward, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. We don't know all in which she said to him, but it does say here that she declared to him, and here's what I do know. Give me my last shouting point. Watch this. Number three. You can't truly declare anything to God unless you first declared it to yourself. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. You can't declare anything to God and go tell God anything unless you've already declared it to yourself. There will be times people might think you're weird, but you're going to need to talk to yourself. Just pretend you got a Bluetooth in your ear. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hold on. Yeah, what can I do for you? I'm talking to God right now. Amen. I'll be on an aisle in a grocery store and somebody will come by me talking. I'm like, are they talking? Oh, they're talking on their Bluetooth. Hands free. Hands free to praise. Hallelujah. You have got to declare it within yourself first. How am I going to go to the throne of grace? How am I going to go to the King of kings and the Lord of lords and declare anything by faith if I don't believe what I'm declaring? And you can't believe it until you know it. And you can't know it until you've made up your mind. You can't truly declare anything to God unless you first declared it to yourself. Hallelujah. Verse 48. 
And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Somebody say it. Your faith. Say your faith. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Meaning you played a tremendous role in this yourself. Simply because you already believed and knew. Hallelujah. You come to this altar. Believe and know. Amen. You don't have to beg. Why? You're a child of the Most High God. Now, I might have begged my mama and daddy for a transformer for Christmas or a G.I. Joe or a pair of Air Jordans. I didn't get no Air Jordans until I was 47 years old. Hallelujah. But those were wants. When it came to needs, I never had to beg. Daddy, can we please have some food in this cabinet? Daddy, come on, can we please quit staying outside? Can you put a roof over our heads? Thank you, Daddy. That I never had to beg you to come to my ball game. You were at every single one because you cheered me on. Our Heavenly Father is the same way. We don't have to beg Him for what we need. He wants to cheer you on in life. He wants to be a part of your successes and your accomplishments. He wants that. And He wants to be a part of your tragedies and your losses too. Amen. He wants to provide you with the things He knows you need. You need healing in your body. He wants you to have it. It's the devil that don't want you to have it. You want clarity in your mind. Guess what? God wants you to have that. You want freedom from the bondages that you've been living in. It's the devil that wants you to live that way. It's not our God. Hallelujah. So Jesus marveled at the fact that out of all the multitudes of people that pressed upon Him, one in need of healing rose up and received power. Sickness and affliction, depression and anxiety, and all the like can either force you to stay down or push you to rise up. What are you going to do? Are you going to continue to stay down and let what happened to you be your reason? And then your reason ends up becoming an excuse not to go higher. What did we learn this week? Persecution is what caused the gospel to spread. Hard times made them rise up. Hard times. Come on. Sickness, death, punishment, affliction, unfairness, lack of total justice. All those things made them rise up and the gospel spread. Amen. What are you going to do with your tragedies? What are you going to do with your handicaps? What are you going to do with your weaknesses, your sickness, and your afflictions? Are you going to be the poster child for depression and anxiety? That before you even enter a room, somebody says, here comes depression and anxiety. Or despite that depression and anxiety, you say, my God, I know they've had some issues, but I've never seen a Christian rise up out of the ashes of what tried to destroy them like they have. And then all of a sudden, other people that's been suffering from the same thing you suffered from, they see you get free. They see you get free. And all of a sudden, they believe and they know if God did it for them, He'll do it for me. And then His glory starts to spread. If you believe that, get on your feet and give your God a mighty parade. It spreads. How many want it to spread? Come on, y'all. Glory, the glory of God can spread faster than gossip. The glory of God can hit harder than drama. And 
That's what the people of God need to be spreading. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I'm almost done. Does anybody got anything out of this? <laughs> In the Old Testament, specifically the, the book of Genesis, Joseph rose up righteously out of everything the enemy ever put him in. Right? He didn't kick. He didn't cuss. He didn't blaspheme. He didn't swear. He didn't throw a pity party, nor did he give up. I'm going to tell some Christians in here this morning, you're on the brink of giving up. Don't. Please don't give up now. Don't let the enemy have the last word in your life. I hate it when I see Christians commit suicide. They allow the enemy to have the last word in their life. Amen? Because God is not the author of suicide. He is not the author of self-destruction. The enemy is. And I know religious people think they automatically go to hell. Well, Saul didn't. King Saul killed himself on the battlefield because what he was knew he, what he was facing was worse. And they mutilated his body. They hung his head on the gate. What they did, what they would have done to him alive was horrendous, horrible. I know that messes with your religion. But I'm here to tell you, Samuel told him, by this time tomorrow, you and your sons will be where I am. Samuel won't burn in no hell. What about this person you know that committed suicide? I don't know. It's not my job to know it all. All I can ever point you to is the Bible. Amen? And I hope I see them there when I go to heaven. Amen? But I am bound and determined, no matter how depressed I get, no matter how anxious I get, no matter how deep in grief I get, no matter how sad or disappointed I get, ain't no devil going to have the last word in my life. Joseph didn't kick, cuss, blaspheme, swear, throw a pity party, nor did he give up when his brothers threw him in a pit then sold him to slave traders. Can you imagine the people you lean on the most doing you like that? They still didn't give up on God. Nor when he was sent to prison for a rape, he never committed. The pit and the prison took him to his destiny, which was a palace where he'd eventually rule and reign and save nations. But what if he hadn't rose up each time, Pastor? Rose up out of the pit. But what about when he got thrown in that prison? A lot of people would have said, God, this is too much. It's too much. But let me say this. And this is hard. And I know I'm speaking to people who have been incarcerated before. Bless my life when uh, Chance Walters asked the other night, who all has been to jail before? And every pastor in this place raised his hand. We are every pastor in this church. Every one of us. Some of us were there for a night. Some of us were there for years. Can I tell you, you are not in a perfect people church, but you are in a church where a perfect God redeemed people. Even the pastors. That's who we are. That's what we got going on here. And we don't glorify that old life that sent us to prison. We don't glorify the crimes we committed. We paid our debt. But we do glorify the God that brought us out. Because I've seen prison save some people's lives. Because when they were locked up, they couldn't drink themselves to death no more. When they were locked up, they couldn't shoot up no more. When they were locked up, they couldn't let poison get in their body and destroy them. Amen? You'll find God in a prison cell. Sometimes it takes a prison cell when you won't listen to no preacher and you won't listen to no Christian and you won't go to church. Amen? Just because somebody goes to prison don't mean it's over. It can be a new beginning. Because I serve a God that can do anything with anybody at any time. Give him a praise.
Somebody shout revival. As I close, life can put us in mental and emotional pits and prisons. But will we stay down in them or choose to rise up out of them? No matter your condition, no matter your situation, no matter your circumstances, we serve a God that imparts great faith in His people to rise up in these last of the last days for the victorious cause of righteousness. Amen? The crowds were there to see a famous person, but one was there because she was having a righteous uprising in her own life. When you decide as a Christian to have a righteous uprising in your personal life, and then the person beside you wants to have that, and the person behind you, and this person, and they're all having a personal righteous uprising in their life then when we come together on Sunday collectively and corporately guess what starts to happen a movement begins to happen and when a movement begins to happen God gets so happy that he just rests down upon I feel the Holy Ghost resting upon this place and guess what happens when the glory of God decides to rest miracles signs and wonders are you ready for a righteous uprising get on your feet and pray come on somebody Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just praise him for a moment. If you're just praising right now, I believe somebody's about to give their life to Jesus. Will you just praise him? Will you just thank him? Will you honor his presence? Will you forget about yourself for a moment? I know many have mothers. Hey everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall. Thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast. Or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. Hit like. Tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples marriage ministry we love you we want you to to sow into the church be a part of the church come on we love you if you got saved today you accepted jesus christ into your heart then we want you to message us right here on our page and we will call and pray for you again thank you for tuning in today